So I, I have the opportunity um, to uh, introduce the speaker tonight. I don't know how many years now, at least, I guess since the last time he spoke. We, every time, we, we get together earlier in the year and we try to figure out, okay, how, how is the next conference going to be? Who's going to speak? And, you know, all the details. And I don't know how many times now in a row we have tried to get him to speak. Um, and we've come close. I mean, I think there was one time a couple years ago, it was like on the verge and then he changed his mind. Um, but he is, he's truly an awesome man of God. I had, I had the opportunity. Um, one, he's my brother-in-law, so that's easy. Um, but I, I've worked with him in Generation Remix for, this would be 10 years. And uh, it's been awesome to be under him, um, to learn from him, to grow spiritually because of him. Um, he has an awesome vision. I don't, I don't even know if he understands the anointing that he has to, to bring people together. Um, this is a testimony. I don't know anybody else who could have done this. Um, he, does, he truly does have an anointing for it. It is a gifting. Um, so, without further ado, the visionary of Bulletproof, Pastor Jeff Yates. Hallelujah. Well, it's all about Jesus. Can anybody shout for Jesus in this place? <laughs> amen, amen. Well, uh, thanks, Jared, for calling me out. Um, man, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain the, the heart, the, the vision behind Bulletproof. You know, uh, we do this every year, and like Jared said, we're... We're not believing God for just a, for a weekend thing. We're believing God for a movement. Does anybody, does anybody think we need a movement? And that's, and that, look, this, this happens one, one weekend a year, but there are, look, there are so many people in this city who have, who have a vision for the city. That's one of the, the most awesome things to me about this conference. You know, I mean, it's, it, maybe it's not the biggest conference, you know, but it's a, it's a conference for us who live in this city. You know, I mean, my, as a youth pastor, we've taken kids to camps and conferences, and they've been awesome. They've been life-changing. They've been, uh, I mean, you know, you see kids weep, snot all over them. They love each other, you know, and then, and then they go back to school, and something just kind of starts to diminish. And what I started to notice was that it, it almost, it's almost like they acted like God was only in the places they would go to visit. You know, that they would wait to they would wait to respond. They would wait to really put their faith out there when they would go to a camp or conference. Well, like Jared said, we decided to, you know, go ahead and, well, why can't we do this here? I mean, we have believers here. We believe in God here, don't we? We believe God's as good here as he is anywhere else. Amen? And so we, we ventured out. Um, we probably gave ourselves somewhere in the vicinity, vicinity of 40 days to prepare for a conference. I don't know why we do that, but we just we do that to ourselves. And since then, God has just blessed it every year. And I believe every year I can see more and more and more and more the unity that's building between churches in the area. You know, I mean, the, the things that we, we disagree upon don't matter as much as the Jesus that we, we're believing in to move in this area. Amen. And that's what it's all about. So hallelujah. Well, um, amen. Well, tonight I want to um, preach to you from the title, Set Apart. And I'm just going to tell you in advance, this is not my favorite message. <laughs> my flesh and my spirit argued for a long, 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 long time about, about this. Um, so with that said, I want to go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit prevail. Lord, Father, let your word be spoken. Lord, I pray that there are open hearts in this place tonight, ready to receive your word, ready to be changed, ready to be challenged by your word. 
Father, let there be a, a people in here tonight who are unsatisfied with just the status quo, that want more of you, that want all of what you have and not just part of it, Lord. So in Jesus' name, Father, anoint this time. Have your way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you would turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, and it started with verse 13. And it says this. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who, who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. Now, the theme of this conference is holy. And as you know, if you've been involved in ministry, if you do any kind of organizing for youth ministry, you know that is not a popular youth theme. That is, it's just not like one of the cool ones, like, like, uh, revolution, <sighs> You know, or, or something like that, or, or war cry, or something, you know, nothing like, it's, I mean, what, so when we are putting this together, I could not escape the fact that God wanted to work on, from the theme, holy. And I'll be completely honest with you, I was like, what? I was like, huh? You know, I, I didn't know what he was talking about. I, I didn't fully understand what he meant by holy, and he thought, but I could not escape that that's what he wanted to talk about at this conference. Now, you know, this scripture says, be holy, for I am holy. How many of you guys know, we sing that word in, in so many songs, and we have so little understanding of it. You know, but it says, be holy, for I am holy. God is saying, be holy, which means, the best definition for it is, be set apart. Be set apart like I'm set apart. Be set apart like I'm set Do you, do you realize that? The angels themselves, at all points, at all times, sing holy to God. And yet God is saying, I want you to be like that, that the angels sing about. Man, that, try to wrap your mind around that. I have and I, I can't. So if, if you get a revelation on that, share that with me. But I, I'm, I'm just telling you, God is calling you to something different, to something new in this time that I don't think we've ever really tasted before. You know, it, they're, they're, we're in a season that we just kind of can't, we can't go in cruise control. It's so easy to. Sometimes we get so discouraged, but God, listen, God is doing an awesome thing in this time. And if we, if we would just gird up the loins and be sober, not be so distracted not by so many things, but be sober in the spirit, be aware of what God is doing in this time, I mean, a movement is 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 on the verge it's right here and it, it listen it's not god holding back it's us it's us who who stand in the way we've got to be willing and ready amen now i believe that this generation in particular is under siege from from the current culture you know to to blend in but god has placed us in us and you you've noticed this a nature to stand out. You know what I'm saying? I, he, he's placing us a nature to stand out that systematically rejects integrating with the world. Look, I mean, you know, you, you see a young person go buy a hat. He can't just buy a hat. He go, he's got to scuff up the, the front of it. Now, you know that the company that made that hat spent millions and maybe billions of dollars in marketing trying to get that young person to buy the hat. And culture is good at that. We want you to buy this. We want you to look like that. We want you to, 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 to be this. But there's something about this generation that just cannot, cannot deal with that. The, the young person won't just buy the hat. They'll scuff up the hat. And then when they sell them a scuffed up hat, I'm going to put a fish hook in it. You know, that's what, that's what this generation's like. Oh, come on, young people. You know what I'm talking about. You can't just buy a pair of jeans. You know, when you buy a pair of jeans, you've got to scuff up the jeans. Maybe I'll just make it rough down here at the bottom. It's got to be my own thing, you know. And then, and then when they start selling you those jeans, you're like, all right, well, I, wanna, I want jeans with, with holes in them. <laughs> and then when they start selling you jeans with holes in them, I want jeans with holes in them and a patch. So I'm going to put a patch on it. 
We do, listen, you, they want us to look a certain way, but no matter what they do, it's in your nature because in, it's in your purpose in this time to stand out. To stand out. God is calling this generation to stand out, to be set apart. You know what that means? It means, it means the status quo just won't cut it anymore. It means we can't just worship God in these two-hour increments we call services. We've got to be holy. We've got to be set apart. God is looking for people willing to, to, to give a lifestyle, to live a lifestyle of this. I mean, it, it's so sad. We do. We come back and we get, we get geared up. You know, I mean, I, I'm not saying stop having services. Please don't get me wrong. You know, but, I'm, but it's more than that. When we come together, it should only be an overflow of what God's already doing. Amen? But God, but God, but God wants a lifestyle. Part-time Christianity is just not going to cut it. It's not going to be effective. I don't care what anybody tells you. God wants all of you. Listen, when he gave Jesus, he didn't give all of Jesus to receive part of you. You know, there was, there was, a, there, there was an, a transaction there. When you decided to receive Christ's life... He needed all of yours in return, not just part of it. Amen? There was a transaction. Now, and it wasn't to continue your life. It was to live his. And you've got to be set apart. You've got to be set apart to do that. Jesus himself was set apart. He did not conform to a world structure. He was not politically correct. He, he did not fit in. Jesus Jesus was holy. He did whatever the Father wanted him to do. Whatever the Father wanted to, him to do. Now, it's, it saddens me to say this, and I'm not trying to condemn anybody or, or anything like that, but there is just a movement, you know, in, in churches and Christianity today that wants to blend in. Listen, I'm all about having peace with, you know, with your fellow man, but I'll never have peace with this world. Jesus, look, if you're looking to blend in, then you're not looking to be like Jesus because Jesus did not blend in. If you're looking to be liked, then I'm, I'm sorry to say this to you. Jesus says you're supposed to, you're going to be hated because of me. That is, that's what the Bible says. I ain't making it up. Like I, like, like I told you, this is, this is not my favorite message because this is going to mess with you. Christ himself you know when he died he didn't die just for us to get it get a get out of jail free pass but we live like that Whew. i got heaven waiting for me now what was i doing you know it, it says it says christ died for us to become for us to present us sorry to present us holy blameless and without reproach let me ask you tonight church can you call, do you fit that? Christ died to present you holy, blameless, and without reproach. Now, <clears throat> let me uh, read this other scripture. I, I, kind of all over the place here in my notes. That's okay. I want to flip to Hebrews. I want to show you something. This is the part where it gets, uh, this is the part where it might get a little uncomfortable for Christians. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, and let me go from verse 14. It says this, Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness. Pursue holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short. Of the grace of God. Some of y'all may not have known that was in there. I mean, when I read this, I've probably read over that I don't know how many times. How many of you guys, you, know, you just read the Bible, sometimes you just miss, you just miss what God is saying. But did, did you hear what the scripture said? Pursue peace with all men, but also pursue holiness without which you cannot see God. And even worse than that, without pursuing holiness, you fall short of the grace of God? Listen, I'm not about to preach to you a works message tonight. That's not what I'm about. 
But I'm going to tell you, there's been quite a bit of grace abuse going on in the church. You know, yes, God's grace is sufficient for you, but it's sufficient for you to get to holiness. God's grace is sufficient for you to get somewhere. God's grace is sufficient for you to arrive at holiness. He didn't, he didn't pour his grace out for you to stay where you are. But we act like that. Oh, grace of God all over me. That is grace abuse, my friend. Jesus didn't die to leave you where you're at. To, just, just for you to maintain or sustain where you are. Grace was made for you so that you could, you could leave that one place and get to holiness. That's what grace is. You know, and as I, was, as I was getting this ready, what really messed me up was when God said to me, you know, my grace, yes, my grace is sufficient. Tell him, yes, Jeff, my grace is sufficient. But why then are my people so deficient? Why? Grace, grace isn't for us to be like this. Grace is to deliver us. You know, you know God, God showed me this. Grace is like... The manna in the wilderness for Moses in Israel. Grace is like the quail that made itself available because Israel had wanted meat. Something that, it, that it, God didn't even have to do. God's grace is like, the, it's like the manna. It's like the quail. But how many of you guys know that the manna and, a, and the quail didn't ever mean that Israel should remain in the, in the wilderness? That's not what God meant. God, God's grace isn't for you to remain lost in the wilderness of your life. Holiness is the promised land, my friend. God's grace was always meant for you to get to the holy land, which, to get to the promised land, which is holiness. Set apart. To be set apart. You see, we, we're, we're bad about this. We've actually started... Um, a discipleship initiative at our church. And, we've, and we did it a little different than, you know, you normally do. Uh, you could stand up in front of a church and say, hey, we're going to do a Bible study. And you get three or four people who are on fire and they'll show up, maybe a four, fourth or fifth person. But we did this a little different. We sent out, you know, just some notes, just, just a, an email, a message. And we wanted to see, and, and we sent it out to people who we believed were hungry. Who, believed, who we believed wanted to be discipled, wanted more than just coming to church on services, for services. And, and I'm telling you, I, and my, my pastor will tell you this as well, we have been so blessed by the hunger that is out there. We, we're so blessed by it. But you see, it takes pursuit. It takes effort. It takes being set apart. Now, what, what these people who do, who've done this, and we call it hardcore. We couldn't think of anything else to call it, but hardcore. But we, what these people have found out is, you know, is in the amount of Bible reading we required for them, in the challenges that we present before them, it's taken up time throughout their week. And what they've realized is not, not how much time that, um, you know, that, that it, so much that it takes, but how little time they were spending before. You know, because that's what being set apart is about. You see, we make so many excuses for not getting in the Word, for not getting into prayer, for not, you know, for not seeking God. You know, we sing songs that talk about we're on our knees. Look, I'm a worship leader at our church. I don't know if I see that ever. And I'm not trying to judge. You know, I'm not trying to judge your, your style of worship. But I, I wonder how sincere you are about even the worship that you sing. I want to read one more scripture, and this is really what I want to get at. I want to go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, and I'm going to start with 25. Now, listen, holiness isn't just about you. When Christ died to present you holy, blameless, and without reproach, he left you on this earth to accomplish something. You know, 
he, he, he wanted you to, to, to become something. He purposed you and gave you the grace in your life to accomplish something. Holiness delivers us from our own past. But when we, when we pursue holiness, I want to show you, it affects everyone else around you. You know, when you're set apart, when you're truly set apart, it means you run by a totally different set of rules. It means that no matter what you see, no matter, no matter what the circumstances are around you, you're set apart, you're operating by, the, by a totally different, completely different set of rules. You know, Jesus was holy. You know, he, it, said, it says in Scripture, he only did what the Father wanted him to do. Well, one day the Father wanted him to go walk to his disciples. They just happened to be in a boat. So Jesus said, okay. He didn't go, well, but God, I can't walk on water. He, he, all he did was what the Father wanted. He operated by a completely di different set of rules. He was set apart. He said, well, okay. And he started to walk across the water in the midst of a storm. Jesus was set apart. The circumstances, the circumstances did not affect him because he operated by a totally different set of rules. Now, I'm about to read you a, just a portion of a story. And you guys know, I, look, I love me some Paul and Silas because Paul and Silas will preach. You know, but the, in this story, Paul and Silas, see, they're, they're jailed for not doing anything wrong. They're jail, jailed just because they, they, actually because they cast a demon out of a girl. And it became an unprofitable venture for, for her owners. You know, and so they get, they get not just thrown in jail, they get thrown in the innermost part of the jail. And they don't just get thrown into the innermost part of the jail. They, they're, they're in chains in the innermost part in jail. Kind of excessive, but this is, what, this is where they put them. And this is where they find themselves. Now, they could be not holy people, and you know what they would do? I can't believe I just did what God did, and look at, look at this. What is this mess? Come on, don't act like you ain't been there before. God, I just, all I did was what, what I thought you told me to do. But look at this. Look at this. Listen, your, your circumstances should never affect your pursuit of God, of holiness. It should never affect, you know, your trust, your faith in God. Now, listen, God hears your prayer. You know, I'm not telling you, you know, oh, just take it, just accept it. I'm telling you, put your faith in God in every circumstance. You're set apart. You operate by a different set of rules. You see, they're in this prison, but they're not in this prison for anything they did. They're in this prison because God had a purpose. God had a purpose. Now, starting with verse 25, it says this. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone's chains. Listen, see, they're, they're, the, the fact that they were pursuing holiness, and they were being holy like God says to be holy, the fact that they were above their circumstances, people around them got set free. I want that kind of faith, Lord. I want to be that kind of holy. I want to live like that. I want to go out into this city and, and, my, and, and my pursuit of you affects and sets free people in my life. That's, I, that's the kind of Christian, that's the kind of believer that God is looking for in this day. Because listen, the old stuff, the old wineskins just won't hold God's move anymore. God is pouring out something new, something powerful, but it's going to take a committed Christian, a holy Christian. A holy one. Now let me, let me show you something that it says in that scripture. It said that at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. But listen, it says that the prisoners were listening to them. Let me tell you something about your circumstances. You know, as a, when you're a Christian, you expect to be able to, to share God and share Christ. But you expect it with like, you know, the, the, the best of situations. You know, you want to be at your best. You want to have just prayed up. You want to be, have just been in your Bible. You want, to, you want somebody to like be, you know, non-confrontational, whatever. That's the kind of condition you want to be in when you share the gospel, right? You don't want, you don't want, you don't want to deal with somebody who don't want to listen to you. You don't, you don't want none of that stuff. But yet, that's the kind of people we run into, right? Listen, 
you're going to be in situations in your life where things just don't seem fair. And I'm going to tell you this, that at that moment, that's when your faith is on display. What are you going to do? Are you going to complain? Because when you complain, I'm telling you, you're, you're giving a false testimony of your own God. A false testimony of your own God. That's not what Paul and Silas did. You see, you're most powerful in your, in your witnessing. You're most powerful in your walk when your circumstances don't agree with your faith. It says the prisoners were listening. I'm telling you, you walk in in the city, and you may, you may find yourself in this place. You may, you may be struggling financially. You may have a terrible home life. Students, you may have a teacher that can't stand your guts. Say amen. It's all right. You may find yourself in all kinds of unwanted situations, but you're not there because of you. You're there because God wants to do something through you. Because right in that moment, when you praise God, when you display your faith and your trust in God, the prisoners are listening. That's when you're your most powerful. Right, right, right where you are. I want to tell you, you know, it, and, I, and I, I've said this before, and God, God says this, God, God has this tattooed on my heart. If you don't let, if you don't let your worship be dictated by your circumstances, then your worship will dictate your circumstance. If you don't let your circumstances dictate your worship, then your worship, your worship of God will dictate your circumstance. Isn't that what we saw with Paul and Silas? I'm telling you, there is a, there is a holiness that God wants us to get to, and it's not just for you. There are prisoners all the way around you. Now, in this place, I know there are people you, you're struggling. This is your freedom. Holiness is your freedom. You know, we, we care so much about things that really matter so little. You know? You know, we, I, know I know in America we're so blessed, but we, we fall prey so often to, to, to deifying the God of convenience, the God of comfort. And, you know, when it's inconvenient and when it's uncomfortable, oh, that's not God. Oh, Holy Spirit's not there. That's what we do. I'm telling you. You're at, I'm not telling you to go look for, for circumstances, to go look for situations. But when it's unfair and when it's, when it's not working your way, the grace of God is sufficient for you to be holy. The grace of God is sufficient. We have no excuse as Christians to be deficient because God's grace is sufficient. You following me? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to uh, preach a works message tonight. I'm really not. I'm trying to tell you that God's grace is more than what you've made it to be. Amen? Would you please stand to your feet? I just have to ask tonight, is there, is there, any, is there anybody who just wants more, who's just unsatisfied with where you are? Is there anybody who just want, you just want more of God? You've struggled, you've, you've, you've strived, and you don't know what brick wall it is you're hitting. I'm telling you tonight, there's freedom, and there's going to be a flow. There's going to be a flow of the Holy Spirit so powerful in this place. He's ready to loose your chains. If God can trust you, if you can pursue holiness in every circumstance, God is ready to move in your life. Listen, if you've never, if you've never met, if you, don't, if you don't have, if you don't know if you have God in your life, I'm telling you tonight, all of this, God is ready to, God is ready to speak into your life, and he's ready to have a relationship with you. He is, he, he, lo look, Jesus died so that you can have this holiness, so that you can have that grace, so you can have that relationship. Tonight, that's ready for you. And I want to I want to make these altars open here in a moment. If you need prayer for if you just you don't know if you were to die tonight that you were gonna go, you, you'd go to heaven. We can make sure of that. And I boldly say that because I I have encountered Jesus in my own life. You know it says it says in Revelation that we overcome by the by the by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God's overcome things in my life, and you can have that God in your life. So if you would, close your eyes. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up all of these to you in this place. I pray that there's a hunger that births right here and right now. That like Jared prayed, Lord, Father, just moments ago, like Jared prayed, Lord, Father, that a movement would start here because of the hunger in these people's hearts. Lord, Father, that you would begin to pour out your grace, your favor, Lord, and, and, and equip them, empower them to walk in holiness, to walk in a new level, Lord, Father, to be set apart. Father, in the name of Jesus, work on our hearts, work in our lives. Now, you want more Jesus in your life one way or the other. You want more holiness in your life. Then I want you to come to this altar right now. And, let, and we're going to pray over you. Jesus. You want more of God. And I'm telling you, my friend, if you, you, you came in here with burdens tonight, listen, Jesus takes your burdens. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Man, I just, I, I just feel, I just feel like there are people in this place. You're, you're, you're struggling. And I want to ask you, what do you have to lose? You're struggling in your walk. You're struggling in life. You feel like the waters have come up and they're about to come up over your face. They're about to suffocate you. There's freedom tonight. There's freedom tonight. Jesus.